Arrays in JavaScript are created with a literal syntax denoted by a pair of square brackets in which we place the list of items. To access, modify, or create a member of an array, we use the same square brackets that we used to access or modify the properties of an object. So here, for example, we're assigning a new empty array to foo, and then we're assigning a new array with three items for the string hello and 33 to bar, and then we're assigning the item at index 2 of the array in bar, that is the third item in the array, we're assigning that to ack. Finally, we're assigning a string orange to be the item at index 3 in the array of bar. So we're adding actually a fourth item to the array. This is legal in JavaScript. We don't have to explicitly expand the size of an array with a special append operator. We just assign to any index we want actually. Now it turns out that arrays in JavaScript have a dirty secret, and that is that an array is really just a special kind of object. In fact, it turns out that the indexes of an array aren't really numeric at all. They're actually just strings. So when we access or modify the index of an array, JavaScript is actually converting those numbers into just a string that reads the same as the number. So bar square brackets 2 is actually the same as writing bar square brackets string of the character of the number 2. And when we assign to bar square brackets 3, that's the same as assigning to bar square brackets string of the character 3. The only way in which an array is a genuinely different kind of thing than an object is that arrays have this special property called length. The length property is special in that the language automatically sets it to have the numeric value which is one greater than the highest index. So effectively length is the number of items in the array. So here for example we have our two arrays foo and bar and if we get foo.length well, foo doesn't have any indexes, so its length property has the value 0. In the bar object, however, its highest index is 2, so bar.length is 3. If I then assign a value to the index 15 of bar, then bar.length becomes 16. Note, though, that this is something of a lie. The array in bar doesn't actually have 16 members, it only has 4. You can see this when accessing the item at, say, the 8th index of bar returns undefined, because we haven't previously given that index any value. So don't expect length to give you the true number of actual things in an array. It'll just give you the value which is one higher than the biggest index. Inside a function, JavaScript always defines a special local variable called arguments, which holds an array of all the arguments that were passed to the function. So here, when we have a function that takes three parameters, a, b, and c, the index 0 of arguments is going to be the same as a, the index 1 of arguments is going to be the same as b, and the index 2 of arguments is going to be the same as c. The arguments array can be useful because JavaScript is very lax about how many arguments you have to pass to a function. In Pigeon, you may recall, if we called a function with a number of arguments that was different from the number of parameters, that would generate an error. JavaScript, in contrast, will let you call any function with any number of arguments. So here, for example, if the function in foo takes three parameters, but we pass it five, well, the only way we can access the fourth and fifth arguments in the function is if we use the arguments array. If we call the function with just two arguments, then the third parameter, c, is going to have the value undefined. So one neat thing we can do with the arguments array is say we can write a function that returns the sum of any number of arguments. So say we call this function sum with the arguments 2, 2, and 3. Well, inside the function we have a loop while with a counter i that starts with initial value 0, and we also have a variable sum which we're going to be using to store the actual sum that's being returned. And in each iteration we start by checking whether i is still less than the number of arguments and if so, we assign to sum the current value of sum plus that argument, and then we increment the counter, and repeat until eventually we have the sum of all the arguments which we return. So sum 2, 2, 3 returns 7, and if we call sum with the arguments 5 and 7, it'll return 12, and then sum with no arguments will just return the default value 0, because arguments.length, the first time through the loop, will be 0, and i will have the value 0, and 0 is not less than 0, so we never enter the loop and just return zero.